Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulullah ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem ecma'in. Allahümme enfa'ni bima allemteni ve allimni bima yanfa'ni ve zidni ilmen inneke l'alimul hakim. Allahümme akhrijna min zulumatil vahm ve akrimna bi nuril fahm ve ifte aleyna bi ma'rifetil ilm ve sahhil ahlakana bil hilm. اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل. I will continue with the basic lecture of the chest imaging made easy course and we reach to the lecture three normal chest anatomy part two. In this but I will discuss the diaphragm, blue soft tissues, and bones. We started with diaphragms. We have two diaphragms, the right one and the left one. And uh, on the right, under the surface of the right, the diaphragm or inferior to it, it is located the liver. And on the left side, it is located the uh, stomach and the spleen, and sometimes bowel. The, don't forget the part of the lower lobes are extended below the diaphragm, and we see it, the bronchovascular marking below the diaphragm, and this is one of the hidden areas, and we see it bilaterally, especially through the stomach gas. We have the cardiophrenic angle here, the right one, and the left cardiophrenic angle, and it is where the diaphragm meet the heart, giving the ankle, uh, angle. And this is in both sides seen. This is the right one, and this is the left one. This is the left hemidiaphragm, and this is the right hemidiaphragm. The right hemidiaphragm meeting the heart, giving the right costophrenic angle, and meeting the left hemidiaphragm, giving rise to left costo uh, cardiophrenic angle. Sorry. On the lateral view, the lateral view shows the right hemidiaphragm. This is the right hemidiaphragm extended from the posterior to anterior. And it is seen in its full continuity. But the left hemidiaphragm, it is seen from the posterior extended to the mid of the, and we cannot see the, the anterior part of the left hemidiaphragm because it is silhouetting with the, with the heart and become indistinct. Sometimes we see the stomach below the left hemidiaphragm. So this is the left hemidiaphragm, this is the right hemidiaphragm. The blue and the pleural spaces, normally pleura are not visible. Pleura are visible when it is abnormal. And as we see here, this is the pleural lining of the lungs. We have two layers. We have the visual pleura and the parietal pleura. Some pathology given to the like blood diffusion in hemothorax, tumor, etc., uh, giving the rise to abnormal pleura. The costophrenic crisis or costophrenic angle, the costophrenic crisis contain the lower edge of the lung, which which contact the, the diaphragm. This is the recess and the angle, this is the sharp part of the costophrenic angle is limited to the few, limited to views of the costophrenic angle. angle. 
So this is the wrists and this is the ankle. This is on the frontal and should be on the frontal view, the costophrenic angle, it is, should be sharp. If it is blunted, means there is some pleural fusion or some other pathology like pleural thickening or other pathology. The costophrenic recess are seen on side of costophrenic ang angle. The costophrenic angle, it is formed by the lateral chest wall and the dome of the hemidiaphragm. We have two recesses, anterior one and the posterior one. We have two anterior one and two posterior one of the costophrenic recess and angles on the lateral view. Any blunting of these recesses means there is a fluid or pathology like a blood diffusion, thickening, etc. Soft tissue. We should assess the soft tissue of, of the chest X-ray and thickening of the soft tissue will obscure the underlying structures. Black within the soft tissue may represent gas. Sometimes we see black streaks lines or streaky lines or streaky shadows on the chest wall, it is due to gas, but the gas is, is more black than the fat. The fat, it is less, less black than the gas as we see here. Burst nibble, sometimes we see the burst in, in male or female patient the breast nibel, we see it and we can, as we see here, this is the nibel and this is the nibel here. And if we suspect mass lesion or other mass lesion, we should take both nibel marker, as we see here, it is the nibel marker and don't mistake asymmetry of the underlying lung disease. Sometimes a symmetry of the breast shadow due to mastectomy and this keeping in mind or other pathology. As we said, we can see the nibble shadow is here and the nibble shadow is here and the nibble shadow seen on the chest X-ray and the shadow could be due to repeated we put metallic nibble on metallic marker on that as we see here the nibble shadow through the marker here we see the fatty blends between the muscles and the fatty blends is less than less density than the gas More uh, the gas is more dense, than, more more black than the fat blends, and the fat it should be smooth. If it is bulge by the mass or it is irregular, we should suspect pathology like surgical emphysema or other mass lesion. Sometimes the Fatty blends can be displaced from its position, uh, giving rise to mass lesion. As this is the fat tissue between the muscles here. Bones, we should assess the bones and the bones, uh, it is used in the bones of the chest, it is used for determining the rotation and determining the inspiration and determining the penetration of the chest X-ray. We discuss the rotation and we discuss the inspiration and we discuss the penetration, how much the penetration we should see. And in the lesson, in the 
of the x which is equality. Also, we look, should look for the verbs, anterior verbs and the posterior verbs. This is the anterior verbs, and these are the posterior verbs. We should look for the uh, uh, and other abnormalities of the bone. As we see here, we have the clavicle here, and this is the right clavicle, and the median end of the clavicle, median end of the left clavicle, and this is the spinous process. And it should be equidistance between the medial, medial, and the spinous process. Patient, it is not rotated. And if it is rotated to the, that side or to the, that side, the distance will increase according to the site of the rotation. As we see here, the median end, median end, and the spinous process, and these are the anterior ribs of the clavicle, and these are the posterior, sorry, this is the anterior ribs, and this is the posterior ribs. Also the clavicle, we have the clavicle and we have the scapula and the shoulder girdle. And we should look, examine uh, for the pathology of this area. And as we see here, this is the clavicle, this is the scapula, body of the scapula, and this is the Grenoid fossa of the scapula, humeral head, and this is the coracoid process, a chromion, and the chromioclavicular joint. And also look for any pathology in these bones. Clavicle and the ribs act as landmarks during the inspiration. Mid-clavicular line, and we see that this is the mid-clavicular line, and this is the right hemidiaphragm, and we see how much the anterior ribs. If the anterior ribs, anterior ribs more than five, more, more than seven, this is hyperinspiration, and it is good inspiration between four, five, and seven. Less than five, it is poor inspiration of the patient. As we said, more than seven anterior ribs, it is high bar inspiration at the level of the mid clavicular line. As we said before in the quality, we should see the uh, spine, the lower dorsal spine through the heart. Okay, and it is normal, normal. And to avoid damaging of the, uh, this is uh, normal. And this is the spine through the heart. It is means that it is adequate uh, ventilation. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. See you in the lecture three, uh, part three.